What's up guys, welcome back to the way we all go. And yet despite my constant worrying, the next one comes inevitably just as it always does. I'm far too small, far too insignificant to halt the rising in the sun. My minuscule worries have no bearing in the rest of the world. And so life keeps on going. I start to clean around my grandparents' home, dusting the shelves and wiping down the tables. Or at least because I want to help my grandparents live be alive, I said I didn't have any ulterior motives. I'm just stalling for time. I'm doing this because I don't know what else to do. As such as it feels a little awkward, my grandfather compliments me for being so helpful. Uh, I sure do still refresh it up and good tidy up. Thank you, lad. Um, uh, you're welcome. There's no need for formalities with me, silly. You're a real help. Of course, I was going to clean up this eventually myself, but this gives me real, it gives me less work to do. But haha. -ha. I was a little trouble, you know something, even though you look so little chill is right. You really have grown up to be a fine man, haven't you? I guess you look sorry every part and everything. Oh, I um, don't know about that. I'm modest too, that's an important asset. I'll make you popular with the ladies. I'm not that popular. Well, you don't see many men quite as modest as me. I'll mark you that. In terms of the modesty, I really am the best. That's why Chio loves me because I'm so modest. Bah <laughs> Grandpa laughs and clapping the hand on my shoulder. But you're getting there, so don't give up hope. Every little bit helps. But yes. I mean, you getting tired of cleaning, though. Know? Oh, no, I don't mind. I'm not bit help. Really, really, I'm surprised. Why? I thought you would want to go out and see your friends. You don't want to be shopping here with those old folks, do you? Is it the air in here too musty? I'm not going to tell us in here. Although he's trying to be kind, I start to feel anxious. Does he want me out of the house? No, I can't be it. I know he can be annoying when I put my mind to it. But I can't be happy to my grandparents that much of it only one day. He is concerned about me. He knows when he's having our social, he wants to make the most of it. I remember, and he said she had to work at her parents' cafe until 12.30 p.m. today, so even if I wanted to visit her now, she'd still be working. I'd go and tease her a little. Maybe I should ask her to send me like a real maid. It might be quite a teasing, and since she's always looking fun at me, they do say night for night after all. Not that I want to pull out of one out of Amy's eyes. And then there's no one else. She asked me if she wanted to go out yesterday. Maybe I could go by her house and see if she's there. That might be a good idea. Although I keep the touch of the movie a letter to him speak a single word during now, during my two years in the city. Be allowed to catch up on what should I do? Um, we'll visit Noel because I could just see him after she gets out the cafe later, so you know. <sighs> I found myself staring up at the great noise slightly over a barren structure that is Noel's home for the second time in these last two days. This is before the large sign that reads for sale is just put in the front door in the front indication that what I saw yesterday was some kind of illusion or dream. No one else family really is moving away. That is the truth. For some reason, that sign makes me feel anxious. It's not like I'm superstitious or anything. Sometimes I flick through the daily newspaper and look at my horoscope, but that's about it. I don't think I don't take things like that too seriously. They're just a fun distraction. However, it's almost as well as sign of some kind of omen. Important to not misfortune, although it's fairly warm the same day, it seems to be cold here. Maybe that's because of the sheer size of Noel's home. Perhaps it blocks out the sun, or maybe the sun is too intimidated by the size of our home to shine near here. Noel's home is the biggest building in the whole village, and it's a situ situated a little way far from there. Some of the houses which all coexist together in a cluster. Noel's home was cold and aloof, just far away enough from the rest of the village to make it feel like it really exists in its own alternate reality. Now that I think about it, like that, I sort of feel creeped out. Well, was that really just a wind against the back of my neck, or was it an invisible ghost hand? Ridiculous, I'm being stupid. These dots are completely useless and worth even less than more new, or you can even trivialize the fields of contents in my head, so there's no point in pondering this any further. Shaking my head in derision, I try to drive away the rest of my weird thoughts. I stride forward as new sense of purpose down the front path and right to the front door. I stand on the ghost of a knock. There's no reply. I wait there while arms hanging out uh, hanging at my side. I'm standing so stiffly I must have looked a scarecrow, which might be a useful talent for any birds around here that need to scare me. But there aren't no else on It's quiet, desolate, or wasteland. Is anybody out? I my fist again, and I'm not going to say fist again, necessary action. Standing in the entrance is a woman. She's all too almost intimidating to a degree. If she's serious, it's good her face doesn't help. Her hair is long and blonde, tied back at a ponytail, so tight her forehead looks unnaturally tight. She's wearing a pristine white blouse, ironed with a single, without a single crease, and a pair of tightly fitting black pants in blue perfect condition. It's no else weather, so kind of Lucy. Do we get to see her or what? 
here you go. I want a marshmallow tea. This is uh, cicada. It fits as a willow pattern. A cup of freshly brewed tea, complete with matching saucer down on the kitchen table for me. I bow my head, silent thanks, my face flushed pink. Somehow it feels wrong as if a tea brewed by the hands of this woman. She seems so incredibly perfect, so completely above any other person I've met that have in her serving my tea. Makes me feel like I'm being waited on um, hand and foot by a real member, member of royalty. It's not as though I asked for the tea, however, I didn't come here and start making or working orders at her. If I had, I doubt she'd listen to that. Mrs. Sakata and, and the shared man to the kitchen of her own accord and asked me if I wanted anything to drink before I even had the chance to get my bearings together. I thought it would be rude to reject her offer, especially as she'd already started rocking into the cupboards like, a, new, like a pinch, you see. So I quickly muttered the name of the first two that came into my mind. I can't be myself to say anything instead of just sitting my tea and sun. I was watching as Mrs. Sakata poured herself for her own cup. It really is interesting to watch her. She does and wants to sing with me and does everything with the poison grace. She makes even a simple task of pouring water into a cup look like an order work of art. This person really is incredible. She's incredible, but at the same time, frightening. The kitchen doesn't help soothe my nerves either. The historic white walls, clinically clean services, a modern coffee maker sitting on the side makes me feel like I'm not even in the same village anymore. No, it also feels like a completely different you know, we're separate from every, anything and everything else. It's a strange world where every single thing is in its proper place, that's like a dusty sight. An odd, sterile environment which likes any real warmth that feeds at this well detergent. It feels more like a hospital than in somebody's house. That, that or a spaceship. The atmosphere is depressing. My fingers tremble and I reach for the cup of tea. My eyes start around and easily with a chair with a rest. But it's just a kind of poor circle of tea. She takes a seat facing me at the spotless table in the center of the room. The two of us sit together in silence in our cold and personal kitchen. So, I see you come back. It, yes, I have. That I need to confirm it. That's sh what should be obvious given I'm sitting here right now. <laughs> mm, that's good. I think I'll miss you quite a bit. I I'm sorry. I was only to apologize. You don't have to be formal. Which is a kind of first be a small smile. How are you lost and then call on my spirit of this room and now this warmth reaches me. How long to be here? Well, I have to go back home tomorrow. Uh, so not very long at all. I suppose you don't want this old woman keeping you there. I find I might have a thickness a bit along those lines, but um, I, I didn't think you're old at all. <laughs> well, thank you. That makes me feel a little bit better. <laughs> well, it's the stilted laugh. I try to buy teacher back to my tea. I want to drink my cup as quickly as possible just so I have an excuse to get out of here. Still, I really can't thank you enough. Thank me for what? For being no else friends. She doesn't have any of them. Huh? I don't think Noah has been falling, feeling well too lately. To, feeling too well lately. She became even quieter than usual after you left. And more that she's been able to make friends with the other children in the village. But Sister Cutter looks troubled. I start to feel even guiltier for wanting to escape, even though Mrs. Cutter is quite a serious person. She certainly isn't a bad one. It's clear she really does care about Noah. Although, uh, I apologize if it's awkward to talk about such things. It might be a bit unfair. But I'm sorry, I don't mind. It's just, I don't worry about my daughter. She's always been so quiet. She's never been very good at talking to others, and I get concerned about it. Oh, um, it's all right. I'll be Noel's friend. I know you will. You're already a good friend, too. A very good friend, Noel. I don't know about that. She's a little bit quiet, but that's no problem. I like being with her. It's because I like it, there's a reason I think me. So that means you'll be with her and benefiting, benefiting too. Although saying that like that, because it's so like a business murder. Or murder, murder. What I do, I mean benefiting. I spell awkwardly, I'm sure whether I worded it right. It's hard to get my point across. I guess I just react probably to being complimented. It makes me anxious. People will compliment to you is the greatest chance that you'll be let them down in the future. Papa may seem to weigh even more heavily when they come a woman like Mrs. Sakata. And why should she compliment me for spending time with her daughter? That makes it sound like a chore. Being with Noah wasn't a burden, it was fun. Every day with her was so much fun. I really didn't do anything special. It might not seem like anything special to you, but I appreciate all the same. On behalf of my daughter, I would like to thank you. Ah, uh, well, uh, if you're sure, but really being praised like this, I don't know if it's, if it's fair. Okay, Mrs. Sakata truly um, to say that I'm a good friend. Now, well, how can I be a good friend when I betrayed her? Mrs. Sakata stands by the seat while she used to keep her blonde funny tail. Bob is there every moment on a tender out of place. The sound of running water fills the kitchen. It's comforting, it's comforting me, though I'm not sure how. Maybe it's homey. At least it makes this place a little less stagnant, less sterile, less detached from the rest of reality. Thank you for a human and a soul woman. I'm sure you didn't come here because you wouldn't talk to me. Uh, I, I, I still don't know. Don't think you're old, you know. That may be true, but I am old enough to know better, huh? But since the color continues to clean this, how it comes with a flannel cloth over and over again, it's hard to know motion, but she looks distracted. 
I should have burdened it. My trouble, just a little boy. Hey, I'm not that little. You are compared to me. I know it's alright for me to burden you for my worries. It's just, it's just the kind of size of it. Her shoulders drooping, and I don't really know anybody in that village. It's such a tightly knit community, and I feel like I'm still considered a stranger even after all these years. It's claustrophobic. I don't say anything. I don't really know what to say. It's just a kind of glance. Throws off the faucet. The sun of rain water fades away, and both by the sun service just to meet it. Once again, everything is deathly quiet. This house really isn't a secluded area, isn't it? If a person feels isolated already living in a place like this, when I'm in the sun, the cicadas can make you. You must only serve to make you feel even more alone. I can imagine why Mrs. Cicada feels happy living here. Maybe that's one of the reasons why the family decided to move. I'm sympathetic to her, but at the same time, I'm anxious. Oh, but now, well, how will she cope if her family uproots and moves somewhere else? I keep thinking back to the four cells sun in the garden. I can't shift this ominous feeling I have about it no matter how hard I try. The worried look on my face must be obvious because Mrs. Sakata frowns, clicking her tiny ears through her mouth. Are you alright? Uh oh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. Are you sure? You look a little bit pale. Would you like maybe some medicine? Uh, no, I don't think I need any. I'm good. Mrs. Sakata doesn't look fully convinced, but she really it anyway. Well, if you're sure, I'm sure there's no need to worry. She forces her lips and arms folded. It's the same face, long words, more than ever. I tell her I'm too sick to go to school. I'm convinced. No, I'll never tell me when she's feeling hell either. Uh, well, when they are kind of alike. I suppose so. That's be why you get along so well. Maybe it's that I'm too old to understand. But it's just a kind of size turning her head away from me. For those few brief, few brief moments, she looks unusually unsure of herself. She really is worried about Noel. That much is obvious. But if that's the case, why is she leaving? Hey, I was wondering, yes, do you want me to be that messing up at all? Uh, no, it's about that. Are you sure? Is it any bit of trouble? It seems that Mrs. Sakata is quite a doting parent after all. He was just curious. Um, I hope you don't let me ask it, but I won't have followed my Jessica until you ask it. It's true. You can't argue with logic like that. No, I'm very difficult to argue with. At least that's what my husband says. I can imagine. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to stop hearing anything. I was trying to offend you. No offense taken. I prefer to say being never so slightly intimidating. These people are taking my ticky boy seriously. But this kind of smiles. I wonder if she's joking or not. Uh, I can I can't tell. You know, so I can't help but smile back with a face flush light beam. It's just um I noticed that your house is up for sale, man. I was wondering if you're planning to move anywhere. I pause. Yes, that seems like a fair conclusion to take for that piece of evidence. Huh? That was another roundabout way of confirming my statement. The expression of Mrs. Sakata's face too I've all of a sudden it started to look strangely grim. I should be careful with my words. I might upset her if I asked the wrong question. Uh, where? Let's just say that. Where are we moving? Uh, Mrs. Scott, please, the question slowly looking low, taking the back. Maybe that's what is it what she expected me to ask. Yeah, I want to know so I can still keep in touch with Noel. Oh, I see, I understand. Mrs. Scott makes her way to the table. She takes a seat once more, picks it opposite of me. I wonder if this is actually supposed to calm me down since it's effectively putting the at the same level. However, it does the exact opposite. My overactive imagination kicks in, making me panic. Is this news so shocking that Mrs. Sakata was so sure I'm as calm as possible before she tells me? Why? Why they can be moving anyone that extreme, can they? It's not like they started to call a nice and large yet, right? Well, it hasn't been completely finalized yet. There's still a lot of people working in to fill out first, we'll change our minds later. Or who knows, maybe this house won't get sold. That would put an end to most of our plans. But, if they come together, my husband and I will hope to move somewhere quite far away. Quite far away? What does that mean? How far away is quite far? But Mrs. Sakata brings cops. She tells me the shocking news like it's the most natural thing in the world. We want to move to England. Damn. I don't know how much time has passed. It's hard to take it in. I know my mouth is open and wide, but I don't have enough energy to close it. England? Why England? This, that isn't Japan. It's not Japan at all. That's so far away. It might as well be Mars. Mrs. Sakata looks at me sympathetically. It's the kind of expression that might give a patient. After a break, it's some very unfortunate news. I'm trying to tell you this so suddenly. It must be a shock to you. Uh, shock? Yeah, just a little. But it isn't so bad. I know you're a good friend with Noel, but it's not the end of the world. You still be able to exchange letters. Letters, yeah, I guess. How long does it take for a letter posted in Japan to arrive in England? I don't know. I've never done it before. But it's, as you, you yourself live so far away now, this is the first time you've come back in two years. I don't think you'll make that much difference to your daily life. Whether Noah always living in Japan or England. Mrs. Sakata is right, of course. It must seem ridiculous to her that I made mean, such a big deal about their own movie. Certainly haven't made it all that much of an effort to have made in contact with her. But even so, the fact that she was still here in Japan was comforting. Although she was a seven hour train journey away, it wasn't impossible. 
I could still go and visit her if I wanted to. But why England? I do a software job there with this company. It's simple enough, but that's, that's so far away. I see that too, way to you, but it isn't to me. I was born in England after all. Of course she was, I should have known. I've always known that Lucy isn't a Japanese name. I've always known that no one's mother doesn't look like any of like any other, other Japanese women I've met. No one's mother is a tall, striking beauty. Her eyes are pale blue, her hair blonde. She has no Japanese at all. I've always known that no one's mother is a Japanese, but because of I only ever interacted with her here in this small village in Japan, I guess I never saw her as anything other than my friend's mother. I never really thought about her as a real human being. Now I feel silly like a small child. Because I spent most of my life living in Japan. Even this little place where I spent my childhood, it's still my home. But just to kind of look off in the distance as she speaks her eyes listening. This brief moment she looks unkindly like her daughter. Although I have enjoyed living here, it's always been my dream to go back. Then I finally have that chance I don't want to pass it up. But no well, no other speaking the English. I know. I realize that she might find it difficult making such a large transition. But it's what they have worried about, but it might sound selfish, but I only moved here for the oil's sake. If it wasn't for her, I definitely wouldn't have come here. I don't like it here. I hate small, close-minded communities like this. People stare at me whenever I go out like I'm sometimes it's not a kid no more. I've had enough of it. I really am sick of living in such a place where I, I'll constantly be reminded that I don't belong. It gets very tiring. I went to reply, but I have no idea what to say. There are no words. How could I ever hope to relate to Mrs. Sakata and her problems when I never faced anything like this before in my life? Still, look at me talking about myself so much. You must be born. You want to know where New Orleans, don't you? Uh, well, I suppose so. That's the only reason why I came here, and now it will be so you were just coming out and say it. I think Mrs. Sakata knows this already, though. She pulled her arms pondering. Well, let's see. No, I've been spending a lot of time outside lately. I think she went to the forest this morning with her sketchbook. She must have gone to do some drawings. The forest, right? This might seem like a fairly vague description, but I have a pretty good idea as to where Noel will be. She and I always see go to one particular clearing not far away from the main walking path of Jaw. She routine is her the same. I don't I doubt she'll be I don't doubt she'll be there somewhere. I think she may have taken a picnic camera the hamper with her too. Maybe she just put the company? Company, that's right. She should hurry along if it'll leave stayed here for a few days. We should make those days count. Ah, uh, yes, Mr. Sakata. Don't need to call me that. I will get enough of that at work. Uh, well, man, uh, I follow around with my words and show what to say. What other ways are just a little bit older than you? Hee hee hee. See my distress, Mr. Sakata starts to laugh. She actually laughs. It's the first time I've ever heard her sound so casual, so it takes me by surprise. Wait, Mr. Sakata laughs like that. She seems like a different person altogether. But you ever want her blue eyes suddenly looking a lot brighter. Her face seems to radiate you. Like, we didn't really describe it as girlish. Girlish is strangely sweet. He want you to call me Lucy. Okay. I guess give me a second. I need to go get me a drink. Alrighty. I walk through the forest, sticking into the familiar, well, warm past and all, and I used to always take it in the past. Foliage and loose sticks shit to step underneath my feet. I can hear the cacatas chirping in the distance, mixed with the noisy carrot chatter of the birds amongst the trees. Around me, everywhere I look, tall trees stand proudly. There's trunks, thick boughs laden, boughs boughs laden, laden brands, with leaves, large branches shielding me from the sun. The sunlight that I able to filter through down to the forest floor is thick to green with the leaves. The air smells damp and earthly of soil and moss browns and grains. The earthly sin fills me with this each breath I take. It's supposed to be why my grandparents still look so unhealthy despite her uh, old age. It's because of living in a tranquil place like this. Compared to the city with its dull gray buildings and constant streams of cars congested the road, this is far more peaceful. I really do think that humans weren't meant to live simply like this, surrounded by nature. Surely this is the best for both the heart and the body. Even if the convenience stores are a long way away, it once it's not that it's so easy to get a whole jello that no one likes so much in the forest. Or any food at all, really. I certainly won't be able to have having ice cream. And if it started to rain, I know imagine it would be so nice to live out here. It would get pretty damp and muddy, and if you have to catch some kind of disease, would you just keel over and die around in the open with Professor and Lindsay and Fifth Cut teaming with maggots? I guess I was being a little over sentimental earlier when I calmed. Oh, when I claim that forest is so much better than a city, medical treatment, I have of food, a roof over your head, when the weather is poor, it's essential, and once living a comfortable life as a human, I think. Still, this place is really pretty. 
Well, walk deeper and deeper into the forest. The trees clustered around me like a compete got meters on a train. It's almost as old as I'm sinking, sinking to the bottom of the pale green sea. Finally, I make my way to a small clearing where Norrell and I always used to go. The ground is soft and mossy, and the soil a light brown and loosely compacted like sand. The trees in this area are especially dense, forming a circular shape with a small plot of the ground and nestled in the middle. They're sitting at the base of a large tree trunk, whether with ages, almost good almost completely covered in moss. It's Noel. She's sitting there on a picnic blanket spread out on the ground. Just like yesterday when I saw her in the park, she's wearing that white dress to look along the lowing skirts. The lack of sleeves exposing her long thin arms is a sharp collarbone. Her legs are crossed demurly demurly fair feet bare or toes twitching. She must have kicked off her shoes off somewhere. No one did ever did like wearing them very much. On her left breast is sketchbook and her right hand is a grasp a pencil. Her eyes are focused downward. She only occasionally glances up where look at the subject of her drawing before returning her sketchbook. It sounds like she spotted me. She is a pain with slice of attention. This is so very like Noel that I can't help but smile. She's the sort of person who gets engrossed in tests easily to the point where she forgets about, about the outside world altogether. I think it's an admirable skill because I'm always worrying about something or other. My brain never shuts up and Noel can immerse herself in her own fantasy world f for hours. She looks exactly the same as I remember her all those years ago. Everything is the same from the way she holds a pencil in her hand to the way her hair falls over her shoulder. She's even wearing the same ribbon in her hair. It's almost as if she's been waiting for me, frozen in time in this exact spot. Just like a princess on a fairy tale. Uh, uh, wait. Was it the last line? Maybe just a little bit embarrassing. Uh, and I feel foolish. I start to worry must look like a stalker is still staying here. This is watching her. I should go up to her. I need to let her know I'm here. Uh, let's go and tell her already. Oh, I don't want to be waiting around here any longer. It feels too strange to me watching her off in the distance. It's making me restless. With this thought in mind, I decide to press on, not content with, to linger around pointlessly. I mean, act like more like any movie, moving forward regardless of the situation. The way, that's the best way to be, right? Maybe not. As I walk towards the world, I suddenly start to feel self-conscious. Why are my footsteps so loud? The wrestling, crunching, snapping, symphony, symphony. That company's mind every moment is so ostentatious. It's almost as though I've been I'm being accompanied by a Martian man. My spy Noah is it definitely not a snake. She sets her sketchbook down on one side, her pale blue eyes fixed upon my stupid face. Uh, now I can't just turn around and leave. That would look even more bizarre. What kind of thing special what should I make? How should I give the best impression? I feel like I did on my first day at leave school and then around guys. Alright. I feel like I did my first day at my new school when I had introduced myself to my class. I tripped over. I won't say a single word of my introduction. I wrote my name down all wrong on the blackboard. Well, since I hardly ever use my real name, maybe that's sort of acceptable. Maybe. Or just remember it. I keep my face go red. Well, hello, Etchin. Of course, Noel is the one who beats me first. Called, composed, Noel, oh, well, who doesn't even blink at my nosy entrance. Uh, um, hello, Noel. Your face is gone there. Did you get stung by something? Did I look that bad? No, my, I was just remembering something embarrassing. <laughs> Do you mean the time when you saw a cockroach at school and you were so surprised that you fell off your chair? My face turns even redder. Uh, no, no, it was that was a thing. It wasn't what I was thinking, actually. But that's a good pick. Yes, it is. You hit your head on the floor so hard you passed out. I remember that, and the whole class laughed at you, even the youngest of the students. I remember that, too. And they called you cockroach kid for weeks. Okay, okay, it's not like I've forgotten or anything, you don't need to remind me. I apologize, it just seems like an emergency story, I'm just surprised that wasn't the one you were thinking about. If I had done that, I would have I would have think about it a lot, at least three times a day. A lot of embarrassing things have happened to me, you don't need to list them all. I think I see next to them now, I was sitting looking down to the ground with the ground. At least the cool shade by the trees is cooling my face down, maybe it's helping to stand the embarrassment too. One can hope. So, what were you drawing? A picture. That was a very helpful reply. I realized that, but of what up? Follow flowers, trees? No, none of those. An animal. Like a bird? Not a bird. I was drawing a rabbit. Oh, and I see it? No. Why not? Because it isn't finished. He startled it and the rabbit ran away. Uh oh. I hang my head in shame. Even though no they raised her voice, I still feel like I'd be scolded. Maybe she has work in common with her mother than I thought. Don't worry. I'm not annoyed. Even though I read your drawing, even so, there are more important things. But how long were we working on it? Long enough to realize it wasn't worth continuing. I couldn't make it look right. Don't worry about it. No, turns her head off, running a small smile. 
a reason it's reasonably needed, much like the rest of Nal's expression. You might even serve as a comfort. I'm glad she isn't upset. Even though rabbits are cute and sketchy and that makes me happy, it isn't the same as the same as what? Having a real rabbit? I didn't want a real rabbit, but my parents won't let me. Why? They think it will get far around the house. The house is pretty pristine. Your mother doesn't seem like the type of person who does allow something like that. She is quite strict, but I don't mind so much. She simply likes everything to be in, pop in this proper place. This isn't what I meant, though. Oh, what did you mean? Noel gels her legs up on her chin, resting her chin on her knees. Shaking her center arms around her legs, she looks up at me from beneath her eyelashes. I mean, I'm happy. I'm happy that you came to see me. I saw. That's more important than any of the drawing of the, any drawing of any rabbit in other world. I think. No, and I sit together cross legged on a tartan picnic blanket spread out underneath the old moss covered tree. We were both silent sketching. No help her cute another sketchbook from the large picnic camper she brought with her and handed it to me, asking if I'd keep her company. Of course I obliged. Somehow the situation with both of us sitting down doing early like two little kids neither making a sound. Reminds me of being back in school. My pencil also borrowed from Noel moves across the page slowly falteringly. My drawing style is diff very different from Noel's, but polar opposite of our firm, confident lines. Noel's sketches rest upon the page with a certain kind of authority as though she, even the drawing itself, is sure of its placement in the world. Mine, however, to put it bluntly, looked awful. It's true that I've drawn together with Noel under this tree before, but I never had that much artistic talent. I overthink things and start to panic. I focus too much on the objects of drawing. I think I feel guilty that I'm unable to replicate them accurately as though my subpar skills are doing nature a great service. I get this anxious drawing flowers and trees, but I can't talk or offer any kind of criticism. I wonder just how it worked if I get actually had to draw a real human being. I'd probably get too scared that my amateur amateurish strokes would offend them. I would have some kind of breakdown. I'm not very good at dealing with pressure. No, I'll not sit like this for a while without talking. The sounds of our pencils tracing across pages and our sketchbooks mingle with the rush of the wind, the rustling grass, and the birds in the trees. It feels a lot like it did back then, a long, lazy day that stretches out forever, almost endless. It feels as though this moment might last forever. I wish it could. I'm worried over when if I talk with my clumsy voice and awkward and sent text, I'm first and replaceable, shattering this delicate, dainty moment between my teeth. If I keep sound, there's anything impressive I really want to say anyway. And if there is, I can keep it at the back of my mind. If it was starting, if I was just starting to feel hungry, maybe I could stay like this with no all frozen songs forever. But of course, I do get hungry if you have a human body, it's inevitable. Humans need food to survive after all. So, the songs is broken by my loud rumbling from my stomach. Ah, uh, I'm, I'm sorry. And I'll smile, sitting in our sketchbook, down the sketchbook, hungry. Yeah, I guess. It's been a while since breakfast. I never had breakfast. It slows me down. I'm like, really? Yeah, I don't even get hungry. You get used to eating after a while. I don't know if it's good for your body. Maybe that's why you're so skinny. Hmm? Does it look skinny? Just a little. More than a little, actually. No, I always look somewhat uh, ethereal, but now I worry that a single gust of wind could blow it away. That's just how I am. I have fragile bones. Even if the bones are fragile, you could at least put some meat on them. No, i frowns. My mother was supposed to eat more, too. It's tiresome. She's on center because she's concerned about you. And I'm a little worried as well. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day. Uh, but eating is a thing. It takes up time. My so stomach feel heavy. It doesn't make me feel happy. I can't help but just want this. You know, I'm trying to remain stern. No, it sounds unusually defiant. If I'm acting like almost mother, then she's acting just like a child who's being scolded. Well, it's your own life and you can choose what you want to do. But I still think you should eat more. I get worried about you, you know? Well, okay, if that's what you think, I'll try to remember. But, but what? Don't tell me if you eat food at a certain time of day, you'll multiply that to or turn into a pumpkin. It's not that, although that would be interesting. It's just, it's already after breakfast. I suppose I'll have to work on that tomorrow. Uh, what if she looks so proud for realizing it? <laughs> Does she think she's thwarted me or something? Of course, I already knew that. I'm not stupid. I'll try to remember, but sometimes I forget things, like my socks. I always forget to wear socks. They freak get cold. It's in winter, so it's fine. No, I will gross her toes. I'll turn on them myself, confirming their status. Anyway, if you're hungry, I made food. I made all my stuff last night. Do you want to look? I examined the picnic basket that's lying by Noah's side. Whoa, that's huge. Looks like there's enough food for 12 people in there. Hmm, <laughs> maybe I made too much. Well, my grandparents keep telling me to eat more. Maybe I'm sure they'll approve. But do they want you to eat more because they think I'm too skinny? Even though you eat breakfast every day? Yeah, it does seem to make a difference. I, hey, hey. <laughs> 
I got you. Yeah, it was a completely different defeat. A flawless victory. Thank you very much. <laughs> no one was a lot correcter that I get than I get credit for. But anyway, can I look at can you look inside? By all means, please do and try some if you want. Unlike art, food isn't made merely to be looked at. But no else but myself, but at the picnic camp and dig through the contents. This is I thought there really is a lot. There are sandwiches of many different flavors, cheese, ham, even strawberry and kiwi. In carefully prepared lunch boxes, I made an ounce of fluffy white rice, eggs, omelet cooked to perfection, pickled vegetables, and boiled eggs. It's almost endless. There are even a little octopi made of sausages, pierced on steaks, and apple sausages cut to the shape of rabbits. Uh, I forgot how good a cooking oil is. I always surprised. I was always surprised at her cooking skills, given she looked so day daydreamy, lost in her own little world. Though, not for sure she'd be the type of person to leave pots on the boil for too long, or simply use too much hot sauce in her curry. But she's far better than, at cooking than I am. Maybe it's because cooking is like art, it's not the presentation. It's impressive that you were able to make so much. It's not so impressive, I just felt like it. That's all. But, but you didn't even know if I was coming. I never confirmed it with you. It wouldn't even done if I didn't show up. There's a small pause. It all lifts her head and looked at me. Her pale blue eyes stared directly to mine. Somehow, it feels as though she's looking right through me. I feel about as transparent as a jellyfish. I just had a feeling that you would come. That's all. She says it simply as though it's a fact. This is what would say the summer comes up this spring. A logical statement that everybody knows and doesn't need to be supported by evidence. The objective truth is a help. Much no well, trust me. How can she trust me to that extent when I'm so indecisive and weak willed? I feel like a baby with that serious light blue stare. She's expected just to know too much of me. It makes me feel uneasy somehow. I saw a cold wind is blowing down my back. Well, then, no one smiles, offering me a piece of fried chicken pinched between the, her chopsticks. But well, she did pick with the sticks anyway. <laughs> when did she pick the sticks up anyway? Her smile so usually vibrant that stars, stars seemed to be twinkling around her face. Wow. Oh, okay. Uh, do you want to try it? I feel my face flushy. My cheeks make me feel hot, huh? You, you want to feed me? Why not? Aren't you with friends? Is that what friends do? I don't know. But I read somewhere that food tastes more delicious when somebody feeds it to you. Uh, well, there's you eat like that. This book that no also got, so I've gotten your hands on. So it's kind of dangerous. They just for my heart. I followed a girl's comic that belonged to Amy. You want to let me do any things? Is that illegal? I fell over back to inside and found it on the floor. I know I should have returned as soon as possible, but I was interested. So I looked through it just a little. Was it bad of me? What? The other old screen that put me down the eyes. I can't resist, can I? Was this a, another technique that I learned from the book? And why was, uh, why was Amy reading something like that to begin with? It clutches with her character. Okay, fine. Thanks for the food. Hee <laughs> hee, yay. It's my face flushed. I let no all feed me. They play the pieces of food she offers me between her chopsticks. Somehow, this kind of thing seems a little too I intimate. My heart's pounding so fast I can hardly focus on the food taste. How the food tastes. Ah, uh, I'm starting to feel tired. But walking is the best way to work off a meal like chip. I know, but I'm getting pain in my side. That's no good at all. If you did it, exercise is no good for your body. And if it is that make you happy, you should still do it. Could be for me that sees a little. Hee <laughs> hee. And now you know how I felt. I breathed it heavily, doubled over by a tree. My ankle stiff, sting. My thing I must have walked into the patch of nettles by mistake. It's probably why our relaxing walk ended up with such a burden to me. I hope my skin has a gun red and blotch tree. Well, even if my ankles aren't red, my face probably is. Who with the rest of the wall, I don't mind. I like it here. But, oh, I thank you. I'm so grateful for those civil wars that I was, I'm almost to tears. I feel like getting to my knees and kissing all those toes of gratitude, even if our feet are still bare, caked with soil and mud. Actually, I'm on passing on toe worship, even just for now. How is Noel able to navigate these woods with such ease? Oh, no, I'm even wearing my shoes, so magic is stunned. It isn't fair. If you were agitated, you could listen to the river. It's soothing, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it is. Soothing, I mean. I like, to come, I like to come down here. It's good for thinking. You do much thinking? Of course. I'm a human. My brain is working all the time. I feel it works best here. No, I'll take to see on the ground by the side of the river. I follow suit, first pausing to wipe away in the straight clouds of dirt that could be stained my pants. We sit together in relative silence, listening to the sound of the river. I can see small insects hovering over the water suspended in the air. A dragonfly flutters past, caught in a gentle breeze. Then this thing, murky shapes of fish move along through the river, carried by the current. Oh, shit, it's everywhere with me, so I can feed them. No, Al and I always got me to feed the fish when we were younger. Trees surrounding us, all on all sides, forming a protective barrier between us and the outside world. Right here, right now, it feels as though I've lost and 
inside my own little university attachment of the reality. Here it's just a Noel and I together existed in a small fragment splintered off from all other life. At chant, no soft voices stop. She looks pensive, curious, dipping her toes in the water as she speaks, swirling them in her mouth. What is it? Is there anywhere like, like this in a city? What do you mean? Somewhere quiet and peaceful. Maybe a public library. It's the only place where people aren't allowed to talk after all. Oh, I see. There's nowhere as water as green as the snow. There are too many people. I mean, in the parks. I think the one else too crowded. There are always some mothers with children. There are people with dogs or gossiping students. Everywhere you go, there's some kind of noise. It's impossible to avoid it. Oh, that's sad. No one else sighs staring down at her reflection in the river. When she swirls her feet around in the clerical water, her reflection distorts, looking strange and inhuman. Ripples forming across her features, just bursting in her outwards like rain watercolors. I don't like people very much, but you're talking to me. I'm a person, aren't I? Yes, you are a person, but you are not people. One person I think I can't blame much any more than that is just a hassle. See, we're together, though. You and I are both people. We might quarrel together, don't we? I suppose. Now I'll accept this piece of logic uh, begrudgingly frowning. People are no good when there are too many people. It gets so noisy that it isn't pretty at all. I don't like it. I would never want to live in a place with lots of people. Not again. She sounds despondent and listening as though all her energy is drained away. I wonder what triggered it. But maybe nothing did. Maybe these reservoirs are the ones she's been turning around in her head for a while. I don't know. Even though I'm Noah's best friend, it's always hard for me to understand what she's thinking. Honestly, I, I don't know very much about her at all. Not about her old life, not about her old school, not about her old friends. Not even her current feelings right here, right now. I can't understand it at all. All I can do is stop my head. Well, I kind of agree with you there. You do? Yeah, mm, I find a large group of people overwhelming as well. It's too noisy and crowded. And yet, you still had to move to a place like that. I did. Wasn't that sad? It was a little fun to begin with. I was kind of nervous, but after I met Sapki, he and you know, they seemed to work out, too. People all about their school. You mean your new friends? I think you're still my friend, too, you know? I know, besides, I had to make new friends. I had no choice. It was the only way to fit in. The only way, you guess it. No sides and shoulders slumping. She begins to tear at the clumps of grass with her fingers shaking. Oh, tear at clumps of grass with her fingers yanking a green tinge of, uh, up out of the soil that uh, unexpected strength. Although her voice remains quiet as ever, she's clearly agitated. She doesn't tell me, though, not straight out. She isn't that kind of person. I don't know how that feels. I have no choice. You do? Yes, I know it, and I don't like it. No, it's fingers continue to work at grass, tearing out clumps. I can see small ball patches opening up the riverbank brown spots where they fully soil and moss just the grass. So that all looks kind of sad. I wanted the grass to talk whether it would scream or not. Though all the rough treatment of it looks quite painful in this world. The one person I can control is myself. The one person I can rely on is myself and everybody else. They do things I can't understand and I have no way of stopping them. I watch the all saw her mate. She sounds bitter. Her words are cold. I wonder if there's anything to do with what Mrs. Carter said earlier. Maybe it's about her family's plan to move. It's still hard for me to take even take in even now. England, they're going to move to England. In a situation like that, of course the world will feel trapped. It's not as though she could just adore her parents to what their parents say goes. She's too young to disobey. She is something I know well too much. That is, this is something I know too well myself. I've been arguing with my mother about moving still England. That's so far away. If I were in Noah's position, it would all feel so hopeless. It would go hopeless. Yeah, I would be scared. I want Noel to scare angry. Is that what she's tearing handfuls of grass out of the ground so forcefully to the rips of her fingers and palms of her hands get stained with green pigmentation of brown soil? Is it an exact defiance? Is someone standing against her parents? Well, she will amount to nothing given they can't see it. I don't know, but I don't want to ask. Just the that mention herself that she's going to be the English. It's clear that she's going to talk about it. The big she isn't ready to. She probably doesn't want me to know about it. It would be better if I let her tell her own time. Whenever she feels ready to come tied, if I said anything careless, I might make her feel worse and I don't want to make her cry. I feel too guilty. I think it's best to remain silent. I'll remain silent and try to support her without words by staying on her side. All I can do now is keep her being her friend. As evening descends, the fourth air starts to feel uh, starts to smell even crisper than before. I don't know how long Noel and I were walking for, but it's been a while. Traversing around the forest aimlessly, moving from one place to another. You know, it is a, it was a particularly exciting experience, but it's still fun. Simply beyond Noel was more than enough to make this experience special. Although we didn't talk so much, Noel was getting uncharacteristically upset about some things. 
I mean, with the shutter, a large cluster of mushrooms she found growing like against the bark of an old dead tree. You know, she cleaned her eyes sparkling. These mushrooms are really cute, and they're good for you. They have medicine all properties that can cure aches and pains. I think you should try one. Mm -hmm. I think I'm playing for myself too. I don't know why. It's not like I didn't trust all shit, but I'm sure when it comes to the various flora and fauna of the forest, she has a far greater than understanding of what I do. Over this goes off fungi that is inherently creepy, just like spiders as well as scuttling insects. That's all it makes a living off each of other living beings. Uh, it's always seems sinister and suspect to me. With the ominous evening, the two of us eventually return to our original starting point in the small clearing with a large box covered tree. No one else could look like it with a wicker basket still laid out there in the same exact place they were before, just like exhibits in a museum. Timeless. Seeing them again feels almost nostalgic. The tartan blanket and the wicker basket, they're like objects of the past, hazy memories lingering on the edge of my mind. Even though no longer I couldn't have spent more than a few hours walking together, it feels as though we've been working in the forest for days. At Chang, Noel's voice stuffed as falling in snow interrupts by musings. She sounds extreme, a little quieter than usual. Her voice trails off hesitantly into nothing, falling into an empty void. I turn to look at her in her white dress, arms exposed. She looks very small, even though in actuality, she's an inch or two taller than I am. Everybody's taller than I am. At Chang, thank you. Uh, why are you thinking of me all of a sudden? For spending time with me on a fun day. Well, of course, I won't spend time with you. I like you. Really? They also push it darker and the storms cloud together across her uh, countenance. Her pale blue eyes look oddly cold. Of course, you're my good friend. Why wouldn't I like you? Oh, I don't know. I was just wondering. Wondering what? There's a long pause. It takes a while to work. To articulate her thoughts. Oh, no, it's nothing. No one looks down on the ground. Her voice tells me to say, man. Nothing. Yes, nothing. I was just thinking it out loud. I tilt my head on one side regarding all of concern. She's just not a person who voice words. Usually she's very fr uh, frugal with them. Because she took the time to articulate something, most likely she said she did have something to say, and this event's even important to you. She should put looks on her face, but now, it almost seems I'll never know. No one turns her back to help, right, back to be refusing to elaborate further. It says she tries to change the subject, just retorts the picnic at first. She's sliding in, clearing and something that under the tree. Alright, sorry about that, guys. Now I'll turn back to the music library for their statue church, which is subject. Oh, yeah, I read this on the tree, blah, blah. It's getting dark. We should pack this up and return home. Home. Oh, yes, of course. And even as I start helping, you know, I'll clean up my mind remains elsewhere. What was she going to say? What did she want to tell me? A few moments ago, the expression on her face was so sad, so this is in alone. Maybe she was reaching out for me. Maybe she wanted some help. But the very last second, for some reason, she considered she drew her hand away. The F goes on, never knows what those unarticulated, unarticulated words were. Perhaps I'll never tell me what she meant. It was because she doesn't trust me or her. I wouldn't blame her if she doesn't. I don't want, no, I deserve her trust. I like my few dogs staring up at the ceiling. I sense a lot of spit off. I spent, I spent a long time walking around the forest of both dust and my muscles are aching. My legs feel strangely dead like there's something too. Fell trees lying viciously on the ground, thick and heavy. Uh, I can't even feel my toes anymore. I really have overexerted myself. It's amazing, really, how quickly now I can walk through the forest, especially given she's not that athletic and she doesn't often wear shoes. She really does at a fast pace. I, on the other hand, lag along her pathetically out of breath like an old man. But no, not even that the description holds truth because her grandfather is a lot more spry than he looks. He might be even healthier than I am. Really, that is surprising. I need to toughen up. I let myself get weak, and the pain coursing dully down my body is the only problem here. There's another issue when I've been turning around my mind for a while. It's about Noel. It's clear that something's wrong, but I have no idea what. I don't know because she won't tell me. Noel's always been secretive like that. She doesn't open up easily. And what she does is often only about silly and sequential things. I know that she likes the fruit and chill open the convenience store, and I know that she's has a fondness for rabbits. I don't know if she enjoys sketching. I don't know if she's in other kind of places, but other than that, I don't know very much about her at all. I know about her. I don't know anything about her life before she moved here, and I don't know anything. I don't know why she uh, moved either. I don't know why I found this item at this time. I don't know how Noah felt about it. She told me maybe I could help, but she won't talk. There's very little I can do, and I don't want to pressure her either. This is really just seem like an impossible situation. Uh, what should I do? I go and turn over my futon, trying to get comfy. It's hard to trick my body into feeling sleepy when their mind is so careful with thoughts. I wonder, what am I going to do tomorrow? Even if my grandparents at home around 8 p.m. and buy me out tomorrow. 
She said we could go hunting for the cuts of the poor stuff when we were kids. She didn't mention anything about Noel, though. I wonder. She's talking about Noel anyway. Spending more time with her would be nice. Maybe if I kept her, if I kept at it, I could find out just why she didn't seem so gloomy lately. There's no sense of just giving up that I never choose anything. But if I did that, maybe Amy wouldn't like it. None of the two of them looking along very well. Uh, decisions, decisions. I don't know what to do. Then again, that is anything new. I never do. Okay, guys, that's going to be the end of the video here, you guys. Uh, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see y'all later.